Good morning, viewers. It's a new day. Welcome to today's devotion with the Daily Fountain, the devotional guide of the Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion. Invite your family and friends. Get your Bible and your Daily Fountain manual while our devotional leader takes us on today's devotion. Good day, viewers, brothers and sisters. It's a blessing and a joy to come your way again. Today is the 2nd of April in the year 2024. I want to welcome you to the Daily Fountain devotion the devotional guide of the Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion. Our topic today is hope in times of discouragement. Hope in times of discouragement. And our text is taken from the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. John chapter 20. We'll begin to read from verse 19. Shall we pray together? Lord, we thank you for this day and we thank you for your goodness, and we thank you for the hope that you bring to us, Christ in us, the hope of glory. As we go into your word, please bless us. Open our inner eyes and our inner heart. Help us to see you. Help us to hear you. Give us understanding. Give us insight and give us revelation, and give us grace and strength to be better and to make impact in this world. To your honor and to your glory, for we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Our topic again is hope in times of discouragement. And our text is John chapter 20 from verse 19. Let us read together. Then the same day at evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in the midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. So Jesus said to them again, Peace to you. As the Father has sent me, I also send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. Now, Thomas, called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. The other disciples therefore said to him, We have seen the Lord. So he said to them, Unless I see in his hands the print of the nails, and put my finger in the print of the nails, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hope in times of discouragement. The disciples actually, because of fear, the fear of the Jews, the fear of arrest, the fear of persecution, the fear of contradiction, and possibly the fear of their confusion caused them to shut the door and to lock themselves up in the room. But in spite of all of that, Jesus was able to come in and to be with them. He was able to bless them with his presence was able to, to strengthen them with his presence. He was able to encourage them with his presence. In the time when they had lost hope and they were not sure if this Jesus will return again, they had been with him for at least three years and possibly half. Waking up, sleeping, going out, preaching, casting out demons, see him do miracles, feed them, protect them, defend them, and provide for them. And here this Jesus was crucified, nailed on the cross, died, and was buried. And they were not sure if he would come back. Even the thing about resurrection was something that they were not too sure about. And so they were just waiting, but waiting hopelessly, 
waiting endlessly, waiting in fear, waiting in confusion, and the doors shut. But in the passage where we read, we're told that when it was evening, and this was the first day of the week, which was Sunday, when the doors were shut because they were afraid of the Jews, that Jesus came in and stood in their midst, and he said to them, Peace be with you. Shalom. Shalom. Peace be with you. In other words, I come to bring you hope. And I come to bring you confidence. And I come to bring you reassurance. And I come to assuage your doubts, your fears, and your confusion. In this world, there will be tribulation. In this world, there will be crisis. In this world, there will be trouble. In this world, there will be deaths. In this world, there will be poverty. In this world, there will be shame. And there will be sickness. But Jesus says, peace be with you. So when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then they were glad. They were glad because his presence brought them peace. His being around them brought them peace. And nothing else can give us peace in this world and in this life. Nothing else. Money can only give us happiness, but not peace of mind and peace of heart, which cometh from God. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, is the one that is able to keep our hearts and our minds in the knowledge of Jesus Christ, his son. It is that peace that he offers the disciples. And he says, let that peace be with you. Let that peace dwell in you richly, dwell in you fully, dwell in you absolutely and totally. So that when you have that peace, you can surmount all accusations, all criticisms, all fears, all doubts, all confusion. You can surmount them. With that peace, you can ride on the wings of the storm, on the wings of the waves. You can ride on the wings of the storm. Yes, when there is peace in your heart, the peace of Christ, there's nothing to fear, and there's nothing to doubt, and there's nothing to be afraid of. And that peace he gave to them. And when I told them, he says, in this world, you're going to have tribulation, you'll have persecution. But be of good cheer. Be courageous and be peaceful, because I've already overcome. It was this same peace that in the midst of the storm, when he was in the boats, that the disciples were afraid and they thought that they would die. And they said, Master, don't you care if we perish? In Mark chapter 4, and he said to them, he rose and he said, peace be still. And immediately the waves, the storm, and the sea all became calm. People of God, peace is wonderful. And peace is not the absence of trouble. It's not the absence of crisis. And certainly, peace is not the absence of fear. When you find courageous people, strong people, bold people, and you ask them, and they are sincere to you, they sometimes tell you, I was standing tall and bold there, but I was still afraid. But you see, it is the peace of Christ that makes that fear to look small and to look not real, even, even if it's real, but it makes the love of Christ and the protection of Christ and the word of God and his presence big. Bigger than the crisis, bigger than the trouble. And I pray for someone here listening to me. Are you in crisis? Receive the peace of Christ. Are you going through a traumatic, debilitating, excruciating pain? and sickness and disease terminal. Benal and all of that kind of sickness. Whatever stage 
of sickness? What about the diagnosis and the prognosis that you're going through? I pray peace for you. Peace that bringeth healing in the name of Jesus Christ. Are you having crisis in your marriage? Are you having constant problems between you and your husband, between you and your wife? I pray peace in that marriage. Are you having problems with your children? They become uncontrollable. They become recalcitrant. And they become wayward, like the prodigal son in Luke 15. I pray peace. Is your business facing, you know, downward spiral dive and heading to hit the rocks, trying to hit an iceberg or something and about to collapse and fold up and pack up? Maybe you are you have reached your wit's end. I pray the peace of Christ to come into that business, to come into that circumstance, to come into that situation. In the name of Jesus Christ. Are you so discouraged and really you are about to give up? I pray peace for you now in the name of Jesus Christ. Because when peace like a river attended my soul, when sorrows like sea pillows rose, whatever my Lord that stirred me to say, it is well. It is well with my soul. It is well, it is well with my soul, with my soul. It is well, it is well with my soul. And I decree to you, it is well with your soul in the name of Jesus. That soul will not be destroyed. That soul will not end up in perdition. And that soul will not perish. Because Jesus, the Prince of Peace, upon whose shoulder is the government and the increase and the power and the glory and the authority, will not let you be destroyed. He will give you his peace now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. It doesn't matter the situation, how bad it is. Even if it's at the point of death, I'm praying for peace even right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. He says, and when he had said this, he showed them, you know, his hands and his feet. Then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. When they saw peace personified. They were reassured. You know, it's like when, when a child is lost, you know, in, lost in the crowd and all of that. Or you are in a strange land and no one speaks your language. And suddenly someone appears from nowhere and they speak your language or you are somewhere and you don't know anybody at all and suddenly someone comes up and calls your name and they speak your language or, or just pat you on the shoulder or on the back you know how you feel you feel the connection you you know it, it you, you that that's that, that, you know it just it just resonates and you you are you are reconnected the disciples now were, were now at home it's like ha ah, finally ah at last I pray for someone who's looking for rest today. May Christ give you rest. From all your struggles, from all your labors, from all your wahala, from all that has tormented you, from all that has encumbered you, locked you in, shut you down, and brought you down. May you find that peace and that rest in the name of Jesus Christ. May you find gladness, true gladness, and true joy in your heart. In the name of Jesus Christ. So Jesus said to them again, peace. A second reassurance. A double portion and a double boost and boast of his peace. He said, peace to you. As the Father has sent me, I also send you. Peace again. But now you're going as agents of peace as agents of reconciliation that where there is injury you bring healing where there is crisis and hatred and bitterness you bring unity you bring reconciliation and you bring peace where there is death you bring life where there is confusion 
and darkness, you bring his light. Where there is hopelessness and discouragement, you bring hope and reassurance. So peace to you again. As the Father has sent me, I also send you. Go as my ambassadors. Go as my disciples. Go as my agents. Change agents. And brothers and sisters, that's what we are called to. We're not called to sit in our comfort zones. We're not called to sit behind those big, large tables, you know, under that air-conditioned, you know, room or in that air-conditioned room. No. We're called to go out, to leave our comfort zone, to look for the, for, for the hungry, to look for the destitute, to look for the naked, to look for the, the thirsty, to look for those who are in prison, to look for the sick. You know, like it says in, in, in Luke chapter 4, verse 18, it says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor, to bring the recovery of sight to the blind, you know, to, to, to bring deliverance to those in captivity, and to announce to them the acceptable year of the Lord, the year of the Lord's visitation and mercy unto them, so that there will be peace in their hearts. So as the Father has sent me, all this period of staying with you was a period of teaching and learning. And can I say the church has learned enough. We need to get out. All of those fellowships we do, they are good. But we need to make them have impact and have meaning and become sensible to our world. He didn't stop there. He said, and when he had said this, he released his breath on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. Receive the Holy Spirit. Receive dynamo. Receive strength. Receive power. Receive anointing. Receive insight. Receive revelation. Because in your own, on your own, by yourself, in your power, you can't do it. So receive the Holy Spirit. To empower them and to enable them to become effective witnesses and effective in application of the work of Christ. Receive the Holy Spirit. Have you received this Holy Spirit? Are you baptized in this Holy Spirit? Are you growing in this Holy Spirit? Are you increasing in this Holy Spirit? In the fruit of the Holy Spirit? In love? In joy? In peace, in kindness, in goodness, in patience, in long suffering, in humility, and self control? Are you growing? The disciples needed the Holy Spirit. They needed his empowerment. No wonder I told them in Acts chapter 1, verse 8. He says, And ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. But first, wait. Some of us are too much in a hurry to get out. We need, we need to wait to be schooled, to be trained. To be pruned, you know, to be broken and to be discipled. And they received this Holy Spirit. And he says to them, the sins of those you forgive are forgiven. The sins of those you retain are retained. In other words, he was saying to them, you have become priests. After the order of the Lord Jesus Christ. You have become priests. You have become pastors. You have become ministers. You carry grace. You carry anointing. And what you carry is dangerous. What you carry is powerful. What you carry can build and can equally destroy. What you carry is delicate because you are empowered and you are, you know, made strong by the presence of the Holy Spirit. Be careful. There are people who need to be free from the shackles of sin, delivered from the shackles of sin. Such people, please go on and let them be free and cause that they receive absolution for their sins, that they be comforted and be strengthened and be encouraged that their sins have been forgiven and that they are not retained. Then there are those who would not want to repent and change and come to the light of the gospel of Christ. Those ones, you can deal with them as well so that they do not become barriers and stumbling block 
is to those that want to receive Christ. So those the, the, for who, you know, he says, if you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. Receive the Holy Spirit. You carry this power and you carry this grace. What are you using your grace and the mercy and the power of the Holy Spirit in your life? What are you using it to do? Is it for selfish gains, self and personal aggrandizement, making a merchandise out of people, deceiving people, claiming to have some supernatural power, hidden power, claiming to have people's destiny in your hands, and that without you releasing them, they cannot be released. I mean, we have powers as Christians, but <laughs> these powers must be used unto the glory of God and in accordance with Scripture, not to destroy the word of God and not to mislead people and to put them in confusion. He said, receive the Holy Spirit. And the Spirit of God <laughs> is a spirit of power, is a spirit of love, is a spirit <laughs> of kindness. And we have the hymn, one of our hymns. It says, gracious spirit, Holy Ghost. Gracious spirit, Holy Ghost, taught by thee we covet most. Of that gift at Pentecost, holy, heavenly love. Love is kind and suffers long. Love is meek and thinks no wrong. Love than death itself more strong. Therefore give us love. Prophecy we fade away, melting in the light of day. Love we ever with us stay. Therefore, give us love. Faith we vanish into sight. Hope be emptied in the light. Love in heaven we shine more bright. Therefore, give us love. Faith and hope and love we see. Join in hand, in hand agree. Both the greatest of the three. And the best is love. From the overshadowing of the golden silver wing, shed on us who to thee sing, holy heavenly love. The Holy Spirit produces this fruit of love, this gift of love, this power of love in our hearts and in our lives. Love for Christ, love for his word, love for prayer, love for righteousness, love for souls, love for his kingdom. And he says, receive the Holy Spirit. Because you're going into a word that is terrible, a word that is dirty, and a word that does not love the word of God. But with love of Christ in your heart, you will turn them to his obedience. And we're told that now Thomas called the twin one of the disciples was not there. Then the other disciples therefore said to him, we have seen the Lord. And he said, unless I see him, his hands and the print and all of that, I will not believe. People of God, there are things we do not see. But because they are stated in scripture. And the word of God is, in, is, is infallible and cannot lie. We believe them. The power of God is real. Thomas had not seen it. But the others had seen it. And they had received the Holy Spirit. That is sufficient. Once you receive the Holy Spirit, you believe all things. And you obey all things. And you walk in the will of God concerning all things. And of course, later on, Jesus will still appear to Thomas. And he will say, my Lord and my Savior. And he will say, is it because you saw that you believe? He say, blessed are those who have not seen, but they believe. Peace the Holy Spirit, believe for obedience are three key ingredients that we need for this spiritual race and for this spiritual journey. When we have the peace of Christ in our heart and we are constantly being filled with the Holy Spirit day in and day out, not a one-off experience, but on a daily basis, and we believe his word and believe that his presence is with us, we can run the race and succeed and bring others to Christ himself. Our prayer says, Lord, may I not miss your visitation at all times, especially 
when I am down. Lord, may I not miss your visitation at all times, especially when I am down. I pray for you today. May the Lord visit you in his mercy, visit you in his grace, visit you in his power, visit you in the power of the Holy Spirit, visit you with his peace, visit you all around, and cause that you have deliverance from sickness, from premature death, from sorrow, from pain, and from every attack of the enemy. May you be visited in this season, and may your heart desires be granted. And may you be filled with his peace and with his Holy Spirit, and may you be able to obey him in all things, and to run the race with perseverance that is set before you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Have a wonderful day. Have a successful day. And have a glorious day. And God bless you in Jesus' name. We thank you for fellowshipping with us today. We invite you to join us tomorrow morning, same time, same station, for another special edition of The Daily Fountain. If you are led to sponsor or support this program, please contact the numbers and email all showing on your screen. Also, subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash ACNNTV. Visit our website www.acnntv.com.